Hello there, Quicksilver Slash, and today I have a video from the Sneaky Snake over at BIA World of Warships from his clan uh, in clan battles. And I personally really enjoyed clan battles. I thought it was an overdue addition to the game, and it tested us. You know, you had some games you really felt you should have win, but a little mistake cost the team, and then others where they went really well and things went according to plan. The big difference I'd say to clan battles is it's still a competitive environment like ranked, but you now have an entire team acting in a coordinated fashion. Well, hopefully they're coordinated, not just people doing random things. And it means a different kind of play. And I really enjoyed that. Before I dig too much into this though, I'm going to announce a couple things. First, for those who are unaware, the Mighty Mo, the USS Missouri, she is leaving the game as of, I believe it's update 7.2 in about two months time. She's getting replaced by another tier 9 premium for free experience battleship that, from everything I've seen on the forums, is going to be the Musashi. I personally welcome this, it gives me something else to grind towards, but for those who do not have the Mighty Mo, these are kind of your last two months to get it. If you're struggling to get the experience, make sure you're running flags. They make all the difference in that grind, and then it's just playing lots of games. So for those hoping to grind out the Mo, now's the time to do it, because in about two months she's going to be gone. Second thing, for those who didn't get to play clan battles and, or did, and still need to scratch that competitive itch because they haven't gone crazy yet, ranked battle starts in just over two days. Two days after this next patch, ranked is upon us again, and the grind begins anew. Anyways, enough of that, now I'm going to talk a bit about clan battles, and every map seemed to have kind of this overarching strategy that most teams used in one form or another you kind of as games went on you saw okay this is what teams are doing you know you try to come up with creative ways to counter that and what you see here is something I'd say pretty typical one or two ships or at least on this map one or two ships out on the flank and just making sure the other team can't charge in here unannounced meanwhile the bulk of the team kind of goes over and then pushes down through C and you try to pinch sir, a team here. This can work great, but one of the other moves I saw a couple times was just the YOLO push. The entire team in the south or the north just grouping up, pushing around the corner, knowing there might just be one or two ships here kind of holding. And this mixture of strategy and counter strategy really is what makes clan battle exciting is how do you come up with a plan because if both teams do exactly the same thing like if both of these teams had just sent one or two ships over here left one in their cap and then the bulk had gone over to sea it would have been a big waiting match and those definitely happened and there were some clan battles where not a lot happened for the first bit but i definitely say one of the keys to any competitive match is not throwing away a lot of hit points early unlike say a random battle where it, the number of guns really matters. I mean, it matters in clan battles too, but just team hit points. And you see this in World of Tanks in the competitive uh, videos when, you know, Wargaming puts on events in that they actually have displays of the entire team's health on top of the normal info you'd get because that just matters so much. And the other thing is you can get focused down so easy. And right now you've got uh, Sneaky Snake and Elastic Spider here just out on a flank. They're not even moving around fast. There's just not a ton shooting at them. And they've managed to work down a very big chunk of the enemy ship. Sneaky Snake is already up to 86,000 damage. And this is one of those interesting situations where you can kind of see what's happening on the map and if I were this other team I'd be going okay we need to group up you know they've got four ships all right here they should have been pushing out into snake and elastic but because they've kind of chosen to play a little passive and just sit there and wait and see the rest of sneaky snakes team has managed to get over to Charlie where they're probably only facing down a destroyer and this Hindenburg 
because the rest of the ships are all spotted here. Now it's possible the Des Moines is working that way, but that's two ships very alone over there. And for those who play clan battles in the future, that's one of the things you need to look for is where is the bulk of the enemy team? Where do you have an outmatch on them? And the second you identify that outmatch, take advantage of it. Don't wait on it. Because right now, this enemy team is waiting on it. And it's going to cost them. And sure, Sneaky and Elastic Spider, they're not getting a lot done right now. But I can guarantee you they're all in a big call together. Everyone on this team is talking and listening to the caller, giving them information, and you can see what's happening on the other side of the map. They're not slowing down. They're not taking up defensive positions. They've sent a Des Moines out wide, and the two Hindis in Montana are just pushing down into sea. They're not waiting because they've recognized where the advantage is. And part of the reason I'm sharing this game is this applies to rank battles too. Rank battles is 7-on-7. Seven seven. It's going to be at Tier 8 this time. And that's going to mean some pretty frustrating games for some people. Because Tier 8 has a weird meta, and I expect there to be some smoking happening. But much like clan battles, you didn't see a ton of smoke happening at clan battles. And by Tier 8... There's enough radars, hydroacoustic searches, and with the smoke changes, I don't expect to see just two teams all sitting in blobs opposite each other waiting for that split second where you can see one ship and everyone blaps them. I really do expect a bit more of a mobile game to be the one that pays off. And as Ranked gets a touch closer, I'll dig through the ships and put out a video again on just what I think is going to do well, what I think is going to do poorly. And you'll get to watch because I plan to stream all my ranked battles if I can stay sane. So meanwhile, you see what's happened. Sneaky Snake's team, they've pushed into sea. They've routed that Hindi and Garion. They've left. And the enemy team is starting to push around. Unfortunately, only one of them is spotted and a big part of any competitive play or team play is sharing that focus with only one ship saw seen elastic spider and sneaky snake they're going to be able to do a lot of damage to this moskva now the moskva is a tanky ship bow in she can take a beating but between a des moines a zao and a hindenburg she is not going to last all that long now the other hindi it started firing but at this point, it's a little too late in my mind. And the way their team is pushing, I think, really hurt this Moskva. You can see his health just slowly ticking away. And yeah, Sneaky Snake's taking some damage too. But Elastic Spider is on good health. So what you'll probably see here in a moment is Sneaky just stop firing. They're going to go dark. Let the focus switch over to Elastic Spider, ships start firing at him, and then Sneaky will probably start shooting again. And in that time, this Moskva should be a goner, meaning one less ship to focus down fire. Now you can see Sneaky's dark now, the Moskva's dead, the ships are firing at Elastic, so the kind of focus of target has shifted. So he gets a shot off at that Montana, and then starts working the Moskva. But he's keeping himself at range, and they have to keep shooting simply because this Montana and Moskva are pushing around at the DM. Now you can see the Des Moines starting to run, but it's going to be a tricky situation. He's got a Garion spotted ahead of him, and it sucks to be the ship that's kind of getting circled from all sides because you hit a point where there's no good place to really point your bow. You just try to minimize the damage, but you're going to be eating damage. This happened to me in some battles when I was in a destroyer and you know their destroyer was shooting me because I was detected on radar or something and you just kind of have to pick this is the ship that's going to do the least damage to me if I give it a broadside. Unfortunately for Sneaky Snake's team the Des Moines did not manage to get away and things are kind of even but lots of damage getting worked on this enemy Montana and personally if I were a Zhao and a Hindi I would just be asking them to use HE. 
yeah, that Montana side on, but the ability to just light a bunch of fires cannot be underestimated, particularly on the battleships where they really are there to soak up damage. Getting some, you know, tick damage where you can go dark and keep forcing them to either take damage or use that damage control really helps. And very often, and this applies in rank 2, when you see a ship that's used its damage control, all guns should focus on him. You should be trying to light as many fires as possible. Because four fires on a ship, its health melts away very quickly. Now things may not seem great, but because Sneaky Snake's team has C here, and have vision into A, they're not really taking the cap. They're delaying the points from getting on the board, but that just means it's one cap apiece with this other one being contested, and there goes the Montana. And now you've got a Hindi that's kind of out alone against a Zhao and another Hindi. And what ultimately, I think, cost this enemy team is they took so long to start coming around that Sneaky Snake's team over at C managed to go into C, capture it, and start coming back. Now they just lost their Montana, but three great Citadels there, and that ends that enemy Hindi. This Moskva is now a sitting target side on. Oh, she was stationary, but gets moving. And the enemy team, they're starting to get into a tricky situation. Now, Sneaky Snake's not on great health. Elastic Spider, the same, but there's no real way for their ships to focus down one of these, and it's just the Moskva up here alone. The Garen and Des Moines are down there, the Hindi, who knows where it is, somewhere in the south. And the fact that this enemy team is able to just get focused down one ship at a time is really what's costing them. And, well, the Moskva is about to eat the dust. There she goes, and their team's up 200 points. At this point, it's about staying alive. You know where the destroyer is now because A is still getting captured. And that's going to get the Garion in trouble because it's just getting closed in on all sides. Now this Hindenburg down here really could have done a lot of work if he had kept firing, which means he would have been detected. The fact that he was going dark as much as he did tells me he wasn't shooting as much as he could have been. Anytime you are a ship on the flank, and this applies in random battles too, you have to keep trying to draw guns your direction, or just watch as the enemy team tries to ignore you and you just get to stack a bunch of free damage up. That's really the way to play a kiting ship. You know, shoot, when all the guns are starting to focus on you, go dark. The second they're looking away and starting to shoot at something else, try to pull them back to you. Because that's lost time as everyone's switching targets. I'm sure every battleship player out there knows how annoying it can be to have something spotted, swing your guns all the way around to get a perfect broadside, only to have it disappear like two or three seconds before you get to shoot. So you're like, okay, next target. You start slewing them to a new target. And then the previous target gets spotted. It seems to happen to me all the time. And the times you're like, no, I'm going to be patient. This guy's going to get spotted again. Well, he just doesn't. Because you can look at other ships on the map and go, they're still aiming at me. I need to hold my fire. But overall, I thought this was a well-played match by APOC. They recognized early that they had a numbers advantage at sea, so they didn't dilly-dally. They pushed in, pushed through. And... Meanwhile, Snake and Elastic Spider just kind of passively kept falling back, just slowing that push. And that's really all it can take some matches. And the enemy team, I don't think they recognized where they had a numbers advantage and thus were unable to take advantage of it until too late. Now with clan battles, the post battle doesn't matter as much. Sure, Sneaky Snake got a ton of damage, but what matters is he played his role on the team and you know I think they really nailed it here everyone on the winning team gets the same experience there's no difference for what you did because it's about contributing to that win and the greater good 
Anyways, I hope everyone enjoyed this. For those that didn't get to cl play Clan Battles, now you've seen a little of what it was like. Anyways, if you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing. And as always, I'm Quicksilver Slash, and I'll have another one for you all later.